Let the Verve return. New York Rangers hockey has been brought to you by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. This is our Hockey Night Live post-game report on MSG. And step one on the road to a Stanley Cup has been climbed by the Rangers by Henrik Lundqvist who was a stalwart in the third period of what became a 5-3 win in Game 5 against the New Jersey Devils. Hi, everyone. John Giannone seated alongside Sean Avery, whose team advances in five. And I guess the first question is, everybody, whether it be us or even your coaching staff, their coaching staff, talked about how this was going to be a seven-game series. How do, you, how do you close this out in five? Well, I think, I think obviously the first two games at home were... were or sorry, on the road, we're, we're big. Winning those first two is, is really setting a statement. I think that, uh, you know, we got to give a lot of credit to certainly our Ranger fans. I think coming in into the Devils building, it, it didn't really seem like a, a road game. It, it really felt like a home game. It, you know, they were so loud, and, and that's that's a big thing. Obviously, some guys came up huge. I mean, there's, <clears throat> it, was, it was such a team effort. It's tough to point anyone out, obviously, Yogs and, and Hank. and and uh, you know Drew and, and Callie, so many guys on the back end. Everybody played great. So uh, this is you know step one of a, of a four-step journey, and, and uh, you know we gotta get back to the drawing board this week. Well, one of the names you probably left out was Sean Avery and the work you did during the series, scoring goals early on. And tonight in particular, it certainly seemed Sean like in the first period they were out to put the target on your back and hit it as much as possible. Yeah, you know um, guys like. Clarkson, and uh, who's not much of a player. I mean, he's you know he really is not that effective. He's trying to play with me. We know he can't. I just try to keep my head on straight and, and play through it. And, and you know, I know there's going to be times when I think that a penalty should be called and there's not. And you just keep going. And, and this is playoffs, and you just battle. And and that keep going resulted in a goal. So I would assume that's the ultimate satisfaction. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's what. We're, we're here to do and, and we got to get the job done and you just got to bite your lips sometimes and uh, it's more important that I'll be playing the next round and they won't. Now it's obvious so much of the attention during this series was paid to what occurred between you and Martin Brodeur in front of the crease. First and foremost, what did you make of the amount of attention that was paid to that as somebody who never shies away from attention? Well, like I've told you guys before, I read Vogue and not the, <laughs> and not the sports mm -hmm. pages. So. Um, I don't really even know what goes on. I, I know that the guys on the team, nobody really talks to me about it. I think it doesn't really affect us. And, and, and I mean, I, I'm clueless to what goes on. I certainly don't pay attention to any of the Canadian uh, sports stations or anything like that. So, I mean, I know that, you know, it got blown up and, and apparently it was a big deal, but I just kept my head on straight and, and kept playing. And, and, you know, ultimately, I guess our team and, and myself came on top. Well, what happened after Game 4, certainly attention was paid in part because of what Brent Sutter had to say with the physical contact that your team had against Martin Brodeur. How much do you think that impacted Brodeur's play in this series? Uh, I mean, I, I just, I think he probably did it to himself more than anything. I think, you know, if you watch the games, he, he dove and, and was out of position a lot. and. and you know, it's just us playing hard and playing hockey, and it's playoffs. And we're not here to make friends with anyone, and, and we're just playing hard and, and trying to get our noses dirty. And it's a war out there. And, and you know, uh, we certainly don't care what, what anyone thinks about how we play as long as we win. It stood out on the handshake line that you and Martin Brodeur did not exchange pleasantries afterward. Did that surprise you? What did you think about that? Well, everyone talks about how classy, uh, unclassy I am, and Fatso there just forgot to shake my <laughs> hand, I guess. So. <laughs> Did you think by watching that again or by being there the first time that, it, that he had that in his mind from the start? Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, I'm sure everyone will spin it and, and, and come up with their theories, but uh, we outplayed him. I outplayed him. We're going to the second round. We got to get our heads on straight and, and, and have a big second round and just keep this going. We got three more parts. And no doubt you're going to be watching, at least if for another, or no other reason than to know who you're going to play next. Where do you feel like this team is at right now, and, and how confident are you in, into round two? I mean, I, I don't think anything matters at this point. I think we know that, that we have to play a certain way, and, and we just got to come out and play hard. And, and like I said, it's playoffs and it's a war. And, and, and you know, we're obviously coming even closer together as a team, and, and 
that's a step and, and it's in the right direction. Thanks for coming in. Okay, thanks. Sean Avery joining us here after a 5-3 Rangers win in Game 5. Rangers win the series. They will sit and wait and watch to see who they'll play next. We'll have plenty more from down here. Scott Gomez will be joining us for now upstairs to Sam and Joe. The smiling face of Scott tells it all.